All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book to talk about study abroad programs here at uh, Western Michigan University. And uh, the reason I'm talking to you guys about this is because uh, in a previous update that I posted on like Facebook and Twitter, and I've even talked about this uh, before in earlier videos, is that uh, I want to go back to Japan at some point. And uh, whether that's after I graduate or for a study abroad program here, um, still haven't 100% decided yet, but I am looking into uh, the different study abroad programs that Western offers, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So right now I got on the screen here all the different programs that Western offers uh, for universities in Japan in alphabetical order, because, eh, why not? <laughs> I'm OCD like that, I guess. So anyway, um, not all these programs I'm going to be uh, super interested in. And uh, there's also a timing issue, because as you can see here for Daito Bunka, uh, there's no current uh, active application cycles right now. So they open up at certain times of the year. So obviously that's going to change depending on when, depending on like when I actually apply. Now, and also keep in mind that this is a kind of a long term ish project it's not you know it's not like I have my bags packed and I'm ready to go like right now <laughs> that sort of thing um, I still have a lot of work to do as far as getting myself ready for these kinds of programs should I decide to uh, utilize them um, again there's a lot of stuff I got to look into as far as like credits how long I, I could potentially be out there for uh, stuff like that just a lot of different uh, variables but uh, anyway, in today's video, we're just going to look over the different programs that Western offers. So let's begin. So first up is Daito Bunka University in Higashi Matsuyama, Japan. Um, don't quite know where this is. I think this is like mid Japan somewhere. Unfamiliar with this area. But uh, anyway, looking over here, the program lasts for an entire academic year. Um, housing options include an apartment, which is pretty nice. Um, class standing, so basically like what grade you have to be in to do these study abroad programs. And typically this is it, you know, usually it's sophomore, junior, senior, that sort of thing. You know, freshmen, they don't allow over there. You know, they gotta prove themselves, get their GPA up, do core classes, stuff like that. So again, I'm not gonna do this anytime super soon, but you know, in the next year or two. Uh, let's see, language experience required, yes. So typically from what I've seen uh, with the Japanese study abroad programs, you have to have at least, uh, I think two classes worth of Japanese, maybe three. They may require an additional class, but from what I've heard from my Japanese teacher, that's pretty much what you have to do. Uh, see, program length is one academic year, and they usually start in the spring. So the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and then you come back, you know, either for Christmas break or at like the beginning of the following year. I'm not quite sure. Again, more reason to, to you know, talk to the study abroad coordinator. I'm just looking over what's on the website here. So language of instruction, Japanese. Um, some courses are offered in English as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, minimum GPA is around 3.0. And that's kind of typical for the study abroad programs. Um, I've seen some of them as low as like a 2.5 and some of them as high as a 3.5. So again, it depends on the program and stuff like that. So just got to look into it. And plus, I didn't do so good this past semester, so that knocked my GPA down considerably. So um, I got to rebuild it in the next year or so. And by the time I'm actually up for these programs it should be fine but uh, again more reason to study right so uh, let's just look at some of the photos here in the photo gallery I wonder if you can maybe uh, I can't expand them sorry but there's the campus here's the, uh, the international office and more of the international office welcome Western Michigan University <laughs> Oh, shit, skipped, sorry. Uh, cafeteria, a little walk around campus. More of the cafeteria, the outside portion, that's pretty cool. Uh, more of the campus, it's very green, I like it. Then more of the international office, so that's cool. 
Alrighty, not too bad. I'm not familiar with this area, so I'll have to look into it a bit more. But uh, that's just one of the programs offered. So let's go to the next one. This one, this is one of the ones that I'm really looking into as well. This is uh, Doshista University in Kyoto, Japan. And just like with the previous program, it's for one academic year. Um, you get a dorm, but it's a single dorm, so that's pretty cool. Again, only offered sophomore through senior. Language experience required, yes. Pretty much the same requirements and stuff as it was with the previous program, but it's in Kyoto, which is like traditional Japan, so that's pretty cool. Um, never been out to Kyoto, and that's actually one of the places I want to go to if I decide to do a study abroad program. I've never been to the Kansai area before. So there's the entrance to the campus. Global Village and Learning Center. Oh, shit, skipped it, sorry. This thing's a little... Anyway, there's the campus. Pretty campus. <laughs> More of the campus. Uh, classroom. Looks pretty much like ours. A little different, but I'm just same. Oh, dang it. This thing goes by too fast, sorry. Heading to the cafeteria. Dang, this guy's contemplating life right here, huh? Um, walking through campus, new building on campus, entrance to the camp, oh, okay, and we looped right back, okay, cool, uh, it looks okay, um, and here it goes into a bit more detail about what those particular programs are, you know, it's highly competitive and stuff like that, and it just kind of goes through the history of Doshishita University, stuff like that and just talking about the location it's Kyoto so let's see this one's located in the heart of Kyoto City north of the Kyoto Imperial Palace and just in front of the renewed re-owned Shikoku G temple so and this is just a more detailed version and costs and stuff again that's something I have to look into because I'm a special case being on the GI Bill um, I'll have to look into it, but from my understanding, uh, because I, I would be studying abroad, all my tuition and stuff would be going through Western, so it'll be as if I'm still at Western, so I don't have to worry about uh, weirdness, I don't think. But again, I have to look into it. So Anyway, next uh, university. So this is the, uh, the Japanese Academic Year Exchange Program. I'm a little uh, confused with this particular one. I'm not sure... I'm assuming that maybe you spend like maybe a semester at one university and then you go to the next one or something like that. But basically, it just kind of looks like an all-around thing. But the uh, the accommodations are a little different. You can either get an apartment or a double dorm or a single dorm. Still offered to the same people. It's for an academic year. Its uh, language of instruction is in both Japanese and English. Uh, minimum GPA is 2.5, so this would be a bit easier to get into. Uh, let's see, same thing as last time. Japanese exchange programs are competitive. And just see, complete immersion. Okay. And, uh, okay. And it pretty much just talks about this, but uh, I, I don't know if this is just the generic, this is the exchange program kind of thing. I'm a little confused about this one, so anyway, we'll skip it. Next up is JCMU, the Japanese Center for Michigan Universities. This is, again, one of the easier ones to get into, and you can do it for uh, an academic year. You can do it for single semesters as well, so you can do it for like the fall semester, spring semester, uh, summer two, but they also have summer one up here too, as well, so uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into it, I guess. But uh, anyway, you can uh, go to a double dorm, which usually just like a roommate or whatever, or you can stay with the host family, still offered to the same amount of people. This one doesn't require language experience, so again, easier to get into. Uh, you can do it for a semester, an academic year, or for the summer. Language of instruction is in English and Japanese, MGPA is 2.5. So, anyway, all right, so let's go back to photos. So here's tatami room, another part of the tatami room, dorm room, 
dorm kitchen. So it's like a community kitchen, I guess. Uh, dorm bathroom, yes. Deep Japanese tub, I so miss that, dude. You got the courtyard overlooking Lake Biwa. Oh, okay. This is still up in Kansai area, I think. Classroom. Classroom overlooking Lake Biwa. And view from the library. And we're back. So this is in... Oh, this is in Hikone, Japan. Okay. I, th I don't know exactly where that's at, but that's where, like, a lot of hot springs and stuff are, I think. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. JCMU Center consists of a beautiful, spacious, active building. Cool, cool. Located in Hikone, a city of approximately 100,000 people, situation on the eastern shore of Lake Biwa and Shiga Prefecture. It's a castle town, okay. It's about 45, 90 minutes away from Kyoto, Nagoya, and Osaka. So yeah, it's in the, uh, you know, Kansai-ish area. It's located in the center of Honshu, the main island. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it just kind of goes into more... Okay, so that's why Summer 2 wasn't in there. It's for the language intensive semester. Students interested in... Okay, that's why. Okay. That explains it. Okay, so this is actually a really interesting one. This one I might be getting into. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Next up is K.O. University. So... For those of you who've been watching the uh, JVlog community for a long time, uh, you'll know that the uh, the late great Roger Swan went to KO University through Western, actually. So this is the exact exchange program that he went through to get out to do the Tokyo Swan series of videos. And this one is actually, from what I've seen, the toughest program to get into, and you'll see why. So, like with all the others, it's for an academic year. Um, you get an apartment for an housing option, same class standings, you need language experience, language of instructions in both Japanese and English, but you need a 3.5 GPA to get into. So this one is definitely the, you know, the creme de la creme, you know, for uh, Japanese exchange programs offered at Western. So Keio University is like one of the top, I think it's like one of the top five or top three universities in all of Japan. Uh, seconded maybe only to Tokyo University so it's basically like saying you know it's like the Harvard and Yale and Stanford of Japan pretty much so anyway let's look at some of the photos and there's a lot more photos with this one what I can see so there's Keio University circa 2003 there's a Sanja festival uh, you know Kashira Park in Tokyo skipped it it's hard to get a beat on these. Oh, it's the same thing. Anyway, uh, Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. Kyo Mizudara Temple, Dare Temple. Soy sauce, dumpling, ramen. Morph Ko. Cherry blossoms in Tokyo. I think this is in uh, Meguro, I think. Shrine Festival in Tokyo. Okinawan Delicacies. Entrance to the campus. Yeah, I remember going to uh, the entrance area. It's right by Tokyo Tower, this area. It's really impressive and it's just massive. More bar bikes parked outside campus. Um, the old library. Note the crest, which is the crossing of two ink pens, symbolizing the university's sole focus on education. Tokyo Tower. Yeah, Tokyo Tower is very close to this part of the KO campus. There's a debate house, I guess. Alleyway crossing the street from campus with great restaurants. And great restaurants are everywhere in Japan, so not hard to find them. Student Plaza at the Mita campus. Uh, campus view from across the street. So there's uh, the Mita campus and the Yagami campus. I think this is the Mita campus. Um, they don't specify. More campus. Oops, skipped it. Oh, and we're right back to where we were. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> If I can get my GPA up to this high, um, this would definitely be a very interesting program to get into. Would love to get into uh, KO University. This would be just a massive boon for me. But again, it's very difficult to get my GPA up that high and to be recommended for this program. So, but it's something I'm shooting for. So anyway, next up, we got Nihon University. This is uh, also in 
Tokyo, Japan. Oh, KO is in Tokyo as well. So、um, Nihon University is actually recommended to me by my Japanese teacher. He said it was one of the,、uh, I guess, like the middle of the road programs, or whatever it's called. Program terms are for academic year and for summer one. I'm assuming, like with the, pre- like with the JCMU program, summer two is only for the intense Japanese course. So we'll see.、Um, class standing is the same.、Uh, minimum GPA is 2.75. So, you know, a little harder, but not, you know, extensively harder. Language of instructions in Japanese.、Uh, let's see. University is found as a law school located,、uh, let's see, it's by the Ichigaya Station, downtown Tokyo. Okay, I don't know if I've been to this part of Tokyo. It just basically goes over different places, you know, Ginza, Ueno Park, stuff like that. Okay. Let's see, a 12 week intensive language and culture program. Yeah, I mean, this, isn't, this ain't too bad. But again, I want to go to some place other than Tokyo. Unless I can get into the KO program. But、uh, yeah. See, next up, Otaru. This one's really interesting. Now, for those of you who don't know where Otaru is, it is、um, in the northern island of, of、uh, Hokkaido. So、uh, this would be a bit colder <laughs> than、uh, typical Japan, a lot more snow. But、uh, I think it would be really interesting because Otaru is also the location of a、uh, yearly ice festival where they show off different ice sculptures and it's a big thing. It's really cool. No pun intended. <laughs> But I think this would be a really interesting program to get, to get into as well. So this is in,、uh, obviously, we'll get into that. Okay, academic year, same standing, language of instructions in both Japanese and English, minimum GPA is 2.5. so... A bit easier to get into.、Uh, same blah. National University located in Otaru on Hokkaido, which is the northernmost of the four main islands.、Um, talk about Otaru some more. So it's a historic seaport on the northern island of Hokkaido, located at the northern tip of Hokkaido's、uh, Shiribeshi district.、Uh, city is stunningly beautiful. I've seen a lot of pictures of Otaru, it's gorgeous out there. And it's about 35 minutes away from Sapporo, which is like the main city on Hokkaido. It's the fifth largest city in Japan, so it's pretty big, <laughs> to say the least. And it's approximately a 16 hour train ride by JR from Tokyo.、Uh, I would either go by, either by plane or by Shinkansen. But the plane ride is only an hour, so yay!、Uh, it just kind of goes over the program a bit more 2.5 GPA. And I got a complete Japanese、uh, 2010. So that is, I think, two more Japanese classes I have to go through. Because I have to go through 1010, and I have to go through 20,、uh, 2000, and then 2010. Although、um, there may be ways around this, I'm not 100% on it. But then it just basically goes over all the same stuff that you've seen before. So next up is this one. I'm not too keen on this one, but I thought I'd just show it off anyway. As it's just、uh, for the summer. So, religion and culture in Japan. This is out in Kyoto, Nikko, and Tokyo. So, basically, you just kind of hop from place to place for the summer.、Uh, you're in like a double hotel. Anybody can apply for this one freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate, whatever the case may be. You only need a 2.0 to apply. You get three credits. It's a short term thing. Let's just jump into photos here. Okay. And sorry, it's not so big as the other ones, but I guess you do like calligraphy and drawing and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting, but、eh, I don't know. Not something. Okay, I think it just loops back. It's not something I'm super duper interested in. But you basically just go over and look at the、uh, religious aspects, you know, boot, visit Buddhist temples and. Stuff like that, and you get three credit hours for the semester. So that's, I like it, but you know, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of, eh. Anyway,、uh, here is Rikyo University in Tokyo, Japan.、Uh, let's see. Let's see, you got、uh, academic year or the spring semester. 
Uh, you get a single dorm. It's available through uh, sophomore through senior. Uh, it's for an academic. Oh, I'm sorry, I misread. That's for an academic year. Sorry. Language of instructions in Japanese and English. 2.5 GPA. Here are some pictures. I really like this campus. This looks like an awesome campus, like a castle or something. It's pretty cool. Here is the library. It looked like a bus station or something. Here's more of the campus. Lots of grass uh, at uh, Rikyo University. I just like this tower though. It's really cool. Wow, wooden seats. This is interesting. Oops, skip that, sorry. Big tree. More of the campus. This is the chapel area here. And we're back to the entrance of campus. So this is out, uh, I think this is some kind of, let's see, reverent. Yeah, this is kind of a, a religious campus, if you couldn't tell. But, you know, still really, really good architecture. And I'm kind of a, a sucker for good architecture. So this is located in Ikebukuro out in Tokyo. So it's pretty interesting. And it just goes over different things. And for this one, you need uh, to complete at least 1010 Japanese. So that, that would be the next uh, level of Japanese. So, and for business students like myself, complete Japanese 1000, which I already did. So I could technically do this, you know, next year. But, you know, again, we'll see. We'll see. Then last but not least is Ritsu Maiken. University in Kyoto, Japan. This one is actually one I'm really looking into. This looks like a very interesting place. So, you know, same as it was before, you know, you get uh, an apartment or a single dorm for housing. Minimum GPA is 3.0 and it's for an academic year. So, we'll go over, I think, come on now. There we go, that's the beginning. Wait for it to load here. Hmm, that's weird. All right, anyway. Oh, of course it loaded as soon as I clicked away. So here's some of the campus. Here's the library. Um, shrine lanterns at Kitano Shrine. The Asakusa Shrine in Tokyo. Cherry Blossoms. Samurai Festival. Nagoya Castle, that's pretty colorful. <laughs> uh, the Mirror of Gold and Snow at the Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. Heijo Q, okay. Oh, and there's more, nice. More pictures, different festivals. There's one in Nara. Here is a house dorm, I guess. Here is uh, some more of the library, a common area kitchen for dorms. Uh, here's an international dorms. This is, I guess, like a, another common area, something like that. Classroom, common space. Again, you got like washer, dryer, stuff like that. So, tatami room, laundry space. We can do coin laundry and stuff like that. So this is in uh, Kyoto, obviously. It is this particular campus, the Kinugasa campus. It's located by different historical temples like the uh, uh, Kinkakuji, the Gold Pavilion, Ryoanji, the uh, rock garden, many other famous sites because that's Kyoto for you. <laughs> Got a lot of good traditional Japan. So 3.0 GPA and a completion of 20, a Japanese 2010 for intensive Japanese language program. And uh, no previous Japanese required for the Japanese and world perspectives program. So that's interesting. You either have to go through like the super duper intense Japanese or like nothing. Okay. I guess it depends on the different programs and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, the programs that are offered uh, here at Western. So now there's other programs that I can go to, but again, considering that I'm going through on the post 9-11 GI Bill, um, I don't know, you know, how much it'll cover or if it'll cover it at all. It's kind of a gray area right now. 
but uh, this is what's offered through Western. So if I were to utilize these programs, it would just be, you know, a simple exchange. I would go off to either one of these universities uh, for either, you know, typically the academic year, that's what I'm shooting for, is for a full year. But they also have like semester long programs as well. But I figure if I'm gonna save up for the trip out there, I wanna make it worth it and go for the full year. So as far as out of these universities that I wanna go to, uh, the ones that I find interesting, well, I gotta look this one up, the Daito Bunka. I'm not too familiar with that, that area. Uh, Doshista University in Kyoto. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, the the uh, JCMU in Hikone. That looks really interesting. Um, Ko, obviously, you know. <laughs> Even though I'm not too particular on going to Tokyo, if I were to get into Ko, then I'd be like, hell yeah, <laughs> definitely want to go out there. Uh, Otaru would be interesting to see. Very cold, but interesting. And uh, Ritsume Kan Mikan. Uh, in Kyoto, Japan. And sorry for butchering these names. Uh, I just woke up a little bit ago, so I'm just kind of like, eh, I can barely talk in English right now. So that's what's offered at Western. I'm gonna be looking more into these programs to see which one would be the best for me to go get into and uh, what I gotta save up and you know how much you know my GI Bill would help me help uh, cover for me while I'm abroad. I don't know if I'll get BAH out there, still you know, I'm not 100% on it, so again, something to look into, and if nothing comes of it, then you know, hey, in a couple years I'll be able to go out there to teach English to the kids anyway. So with that said, this is the Andy San, sign up for now, thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning in to this little look through of the different programs offered at uh, my university, Western Michigan and uh, for watching my other stuff. And if you guys uh, saw a program or a university or whatever that kind of caught your eye and be like, you know, either you went there or you know somebody went there who had a good time, you know, be sure to let me know in the comments below in the boopity boops. And uh, just tell me about your experience or their experience, whatever the case may be. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.